Hey footy fans, welcome to the Point of Difference Rugby League podcast. I'm your host Dave and today we're going back in the day with a Cowboys and Warriors legend. It's the one and only Greek legend, George Gaddis. How you going, mate? Very good, Dave. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, my pleasure, man. It's so cool to meet you. Uh, another Warriors great. Uh, you're definitely pro-Warriors when it comes to your career. Um, <laughs> but uh, what have you been up to, man? What are you doing with yourself? Oh, yeah, a bit, bit of a journey since footy... Footy finished. Um, I'm, I'm long. Long story short, I'll fast forward. I'm I'm, I'm working in the uh, corrective services industry now. I've been um, I've been uh, working out of prison now for the last eight years. Okay. Um, it was probably probably pretty apt because uh, I was I was working in my family business, and if I didn't get out of there, I probably would have ended up on the other side of the bars. So. I <laughs> I, I had to do a bit of a 360 uh, career ch- change and um, and that became available. Um, probably probably showed to me through uh, another ex-teammate, uh, um, Sean Valentine, who I played with in the um, in the Queensland Cup and then again later at uh, Cowboys and he'd, he'd worked at the prison for a while and I was at a bit of a crossroads and uh, he contacted me ironically one day asking for a, a Warriors jersey and we got to chatting and um, next thing you know, I'm applying and um, got got entry into uh, the Queensland Corrective Services and been there ever since. Oh, yeah, that's a bit of a change from the old fish and chip shop days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it was, it, it, it was totally unexpected. You know, I fully expected to... To, to be working in the in the family uh the family business till I was old and grey, but it never worked out that way. Um so we just had to we had to do a bit of an audible and start again. True. So what's the shift work like? Um but here you do a bit of shift work there. Oh yeah. I, for those uh, at home who do a lot of shift work, they're not fun. You know, like uh mm-hmm. I don't work too hard. I, I've got to be particularly honest, you know, we we're kind of there for what we may have to do, not not what we do do. So um but when it goes wrong, it does go wrong badly. But um most of the times they're they're pretty cruisy nights, so I can't complain too much. It's pretty pretty hectic or like pretty scary going into a place like that. Oh yeah, I, I, but you know, I think um, I think coming from a, a sporting background well prepares you for uh, just right. being able to interact with people and you know call things out and put a little bit of shit on people and do it in a way that's not offensive. It's a bit humorous, you know. Um, they they the inmates kind of like to just be treated with a little bit of respect and you know and 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 don't, don't mind a bit of humor as well. So if you can interact and sort of get on on their level that sometimes it makes the job a bit easier right i reckon it takes a seriously special person to to go into that industry let's put it that way that would freak <laughs> the crap out of me bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh look oh. The, the, the men's is not too bad the women's is that is is the is, is the issue they're, they're a little bit they're, they're a little bit crazy over there you got to be careful but <laughs> no it's it's all good Interestingly, I actually used to drive a, a truck and do fruit and vegetable deliveries to prisons and like all sorts of places when I was way younger. It used to scare the shit out of me every week. <laughs> and I had to interact oh, with the prisoners and stuff, unloading the truck and stuff. It used to scare me out like, don't stab me. <laughs> so, no, I've, I've, com- I've comically referred to myself as Sergeant Schultz. I see nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> And, oh, uh, I, think it, I think it just makes for a a, a, a bit of a, a longevity career in that industry. Uh, sometimes um, the less you know, the better. Yeah, man. Oh, mate, that's incredible. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're far braver than I. Right, let's uh, wind the clock back, man. Um, George Gaddis, where did you grow up and what was life like for you as a young fella? Oh, I, I grew up in Townsville and um, always, you know, um, from a young age, once the Cowboys become incepted into the uh, uh, the uh, New South Wales Rugby League at that time, you know, it was, it was a massive dream to sort of play for the Cowboys, um, come through, um, the force my way into the junior grades and, uh, you know, it was there or thereabouts um, always, but it just um, unfortunately injury 
derailed me at inopportune times and I was never able to get my foot in the door. Yeah. Um, but yeah, home for me has always been, um, home for me has always been Townsville and just, uh, from a migrant family. So, you know, we brought up with a bit of work ethic, working in a, our family fish shop from, yeah. uh, pretty much from the time we can walk to the time we could talk. We we're, we're in there doing something. So, um, that's always held me in good stead. I think that, that work ethic side of things. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, uh. What made you get into rugby league as a young fella? Like, uh, what was the appeal to the game and how did you first find your way into playing rugby league? Yeah, a bit, bit by fluke, really. You know, like, as I said, we we, we used to work. Um, we used to sort of get carted quite a bit between home and uh, and, and the fish shop out. My neighbours, um, when I was quite young, in like year one and two, um, they were like rugby league stars at that time. They were young young really talented young um, rugby league players. Yep. And they started dragging us along to some of the football trainings and they used to bash us a little bit in the front yard and uh, got a bit of a competitive streak. So, you know, the, the harder they belted me, the, the more I just just wanted me uh, to be able to return serve with that. Mind you, they were like six foot tall by the time they were in year three. So they, they were quite, <laughs> quite a lot bigger than me, but... You know, it, it sort of, I guess it started my hunger in rugby league and my passion for it. Yeah. So do you reckon uh, you would say you enjoyed the physical contact, like right from a young age all the way through? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, I think um, league, you've got to have that little bit of aggression in you we, 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 or, or that little bit of competitive streak where if you get hit, you know, you, you want to you wanna hit people back and... Um, <laughs> I guess I built I built my game on being a strong defensive player, um, yep. and you know defensively I was always fairly strong. So, um, I, yeah, I, I definitely enjoy that part of the game. Awesome. What about the training side? And what was your position coming through? Like, did you always play hooker, or and, and did you enjoy like smashing yourself doing the training? Oh, look, I was. Didn't know too much about training from a young age. You know, like I love the I love the the comp competitive nature of sport from a young age, I, I, I know that. And I was, I was always a back row, but I was always going to be a little bit too small to play probably back row given these, um, the size of the, the players these days in, in NRL and in top flight football. So um, I realised, realised probably, um, you know, towards the end of June is that I need to move into a hooker and I just sort of made that move and uh, it was a good one for me. Okay, so what were the clubs you were playing for in your junior footy before you, like, made it to that NRL level or into the junior system for NRL? Um, look, I played I, I played for my, my local club here, um, Centrals, and, okay. um, you know, it, it was a very, very strong junior club in Townsville at that stage. Um surrounded by a lot of good people and, and, and come through that system and um probably probably wasn't until it was around about 17 18 where I really started to, I, I guess I, I blossomed a little bit yeah. you know I just I really worked hard on a bit of areas that I needed to my speed my fitness and um um and that started to to to, to equate onto the field and I got some good results and um, kicked on from there. I was very lucky to be a part of a, a Kerwin Bears team back then. Yep. Um, we were the first, that which was uh, our schoolboy team, um, yep. back when there was the Commonwealth Bank Cup competition and we, we were the first um, team from pretty much from Townsville to to make the national semifinals. And, um, wow. I, I guess I guess that season for me cemented it in my head that, you know, I, I had something to offer. Yeah. Um, at the top at, at top level and just wanted to give it a red hot crack. Okay, so how did that progression into the Cowboys happen? Did they come and find you? Did you go and trial for them? How did that all come about? Well, as I, as I sort of mentioned earlier, I was I was always there or thereabouts to the Cowboys and sort of in their systems, but never really contracted. And um, that I remember that that particular season because uh, the Super League was coming in the following year, oh, and. Yes. Uh, I was I was down and um uh, we were down in Sydney playing uh John Paul II in the, in the national semi-finals and that side was stacked. They had the Pulitzer brothers, oh, wow. uh, yeah, Benny Galea, 
Um, yeah. And a lot, a, quite a few other players who went on to have big, good careers in the NRL. Yeah. And I remember, I remember being in the dressing room before the game, and uh, the then recruitment officer um, was Kelly Egan. He came in and gave me a bit of reassurance. Said, "Look, there's a lot of people here watching. You know, you, you just letting you know." You're the first person we've got signed for next year, and you get yeah. you, you're in our you're in our system. You know that, so don't do anything silly. And I was I was that pumped. I went out, I played five minutes. I did my knee. Um, okay. Oh, I, I had to have a re- knee reconstruction. I sort of was on and off that game a few times. I've never had a knee injury or any major injury up until that point. Um, and I remember never hearing another word from it. <laughs> Oh, mate. regarding that following season. So it was, you know, a bit of a, a hard lesson into the reality of uh, professional sport and how cutthroat it is. Yeah. Um, and, and that sort of started me, I guess, um, on, 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 my, on, my, on, a, on a different path of my rugby league journey. And I had to sort of go away and start again and yeah. uh, went down to Queensland Cup, played for West. Just turned up on their on their doorstep and uh, played for that wonderful club yeah. um, in the Queensland Cup. Um, as there was there was no there was there was nothing here for me in Townsville anymore. They would made it pretty clear that um, yeah. they'd gone a different direction junior wise. Okay. Um, so I went down to um, Wests in, in in Brisbane and made some lifelong friends there and got to experience uh, a brilliant rugby league culture. Um, that I'd never experienced before, and okay. the only only place I probably experienced that um, great club environment of great club culture since then was the Warriors. Okay. You know? um, so it's funny the way footy sort of takes you on these little journeys and takes you different yeah. places. But yeah, I, I had to go down to Brisbane and and work my way back through the rugby league system and prove I could. I was worthwhile to earn an opportunity playing the NRL. Absolutely. So uh, how did it all come back around that you ended up signing with the Cowboys uh, and you made your debut in 2001, if I'm correct? Yeah. Well, yeah, so, you know. So what was that journey? Uh, oh, well, uh, you know, I, I I came through at West and I, I, I represented um, Queens, uh, Queensland, um, Queensland City, um, uh, and Queensland residents for for a number of years um, yep. playing through playing through Wests and um, and later a a season um, and East and Brisbane. Okay. Uh, I I did end up leaving West for a year to go play for East, which um, despite East being an incredible club, was a massive mistake um, okay. in my career, and I always I'll, I'll always regret that because you know West were such a good club. Um, but I, I did, as I said, I did get to represent Queensland residents and um, made some rep sides and uh, was uh, more or less, I contacted Cowboys and said, look, I just want to come home. Or, you know, I, I guess at that stage I'd done enough for them to uh, consider me as maybe a, a valuable addition to their club if they had injuries. Okay. And uh, I rocked up. They, they uh, at that stage, Tim Sheens was there, and um, they did give me an opportunity to to, to come back and okay. and just trial and train. And yeah. uh, at that stage, cool. Oh, there must have been five. They they made it very clear there was probably about five players in front of me for the the hooker position. Oh man! <laughs> and um, yeah, and. I said, "Yep, I've got no problems with that." For me, I'd 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 gone as far as my rugby league journey, staying away from home. Or that I was prepared to do. Okay. So I said, "Yeah, I'm prepared to come home and 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 fight and and show you what I can do." And went back and just made a point to, you know, every fitness event, you know, every every contact session, every skills thing to try and do my best. Uh, you know, um, get the points on my opposite number from yep. from a training level, and okay. um, they ended up um, giving me an opportunity to um, stay on for the year. Yeah, and I ended up finishing the year in 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 the NRL in two thousand and one, and and um, got rookie of the year. 
That's um, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah, what so a fight, man. Yeah, well, I, I may have been further down the list, to be perfectly honest. I was... um. I may have been further down the list. I wasn't. I wasn't held in the highest regards, but I, I think my work ethic, um, in the end, sort of won people, uh, won the coaching staff over there. Right. And um, yeah, I got I ended up um, on a three year deal at at the at the Cowboys from yep. two thousand one yep. to through to two thousand and three uh, and two thousand and. One, as I said, I, I think I played six, 16 NRL games, 11 NRL games, and I got Rookie of the Year. Uh, the next year, The next year I, I played um, roughly about 16, 17 games and um, you sort of learned my craft a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and 2003, I was primed for a uh, – I was as fit and strong as I'd, I'd ever been, and I and I, I thought, oh, this is, this is my year. I'm going to have a – I really felt ready to explode, and yep. I got selected in the um, in the sevens. I got sweet. selected to play in the sevens, and we went went down and played um, in Sydney. And I literally broke my forearm in the in the first match. Oh, you're kidding! And <sighs> I remember, I remember, I came off that game, and um, I'd, I'd gone and hit Danny Danny Nutley, the little short oh, nugget. Mate, he's down. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, he just he just popped up his little his little elbow, and I just clipped his el- uh, his, his forearm, and I just clipped his elbow with my arm, and 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 I just I felt it go dead. Yeah. Um, and ended up finishing the game, but I didn't have too much grip because they were short matches. They were, they were they were short matches, and I sort of told yeah. the told the people there at the time. I said, oh, I think of you know it's something it's something wrong. And they yeah. and they they got my arm and they and they twisted it they twisted it this way, and they the pro, poking prodding it. They go, is, is there any pain there? I went, no, they said no. You're right. You've just corked it. Okay. Um, yeah, just corked it. You'll be right for the next game. Cool. So all right. So I ended up um, there's a few hours gaps between the games. So I ended up lacing up and done the warm up and during the warm up said still feeling a bit you know a bit sore. I'm, yeah. They said, oh, I've done the tests again and it kind of felt like you're whinging a little bit. <laughs> okay. and, I, and, I, and I didn't want to give up my opportunity because we were fighting so hard for positions at the Cowboys. There's a couple of really yep. good players there. Um, you know, we were all jostling for spots. Yeah. So we ended up going back out and um, we ended up playing. I yep. came off and again, I said, look, this is really sore. Like, and they go, oh, give us a look at this again. And they done all the tests and said, no, no, look, we'll send you up for a scan just to be safe, but yeah. you're, uh, you'll are you definitely be your right for tomorrow. And Ty Williams at the time was in the, in the, in the side. Um, yeah. And he had, had a poke in the eye. They said, oh, you, you'll, be, you will, will, you'll definitely be ruled out for tomorrow, but we'll just send you up precautionary. Okay. And, and ended up going up to the hospital. I'd done the, the scans, and I'd, I'd I'd done what they call a Galliazzi fracture on my forearm. Okay. Um, and, and what a Galliazzi fracture is, it, it it breaks your radius and dislocates, uh, dislocates your radius from your ulna at the um at the wrist joint. Okay. <laughs> that sounds and, horrific. <laughs> yeah, uh, it wasn't fun, and no, and that no. that marked the end of my Cowboys career. Really, like pretty much really? while I was, I missed I missed the the next eight to twelve weeks. And yeah. while while I was injured, we had signed some terrific players. Paul Rahi, he come to the club. Campion oh, wow. was there. Yep. Um, they had signed, you know, Scott Tronk, um, Norton, yep. a handful of really. Good NRL first graders and 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 the club um, played really well in the in in the trials uh, in in the, in the first rounds and pretty much while I was off con- uh, while I was on the sidelines, um, my replacement hooker played well. They offered him a contract. They had a young player by the name of um, uh, Aaron Payne. You yes, might have heard he was of. A great player. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, he was a great player. <laughs> he went on to he went on to play 300, uh, 250, 300 first round yeah. games for the club. Amazing. So they had him in the wing. So more or less, while I was on the sideline injured, they, they made the decision that I was going wasn't going to be resigned for the following year. 
Oh, and tough. was that bit a bit of pill to swallow? And I'd, at that stage, I was resigned that, you know, rugby league was over for me and that was it. Okay, so you left at the end of 2003. And yeah. what happened next? Because you just kind of fell off the radar and off the map completely. What happened to you in those few years? Well, um, we, as a family, we decided to um, expand our family business. Okay. Um, Mum and Dad had a little hole in the wall fish shop, and yep. um, a little hole in the wall fish shop in Townsville was very successful for a number of years. And we had a we had a, an uncle down in Sydney who who had a much bigger operation, but same quality of food that we had. And we we made a decision to try and uh, replicate what he was doing down down there up here in Townsville, and, and that was very much uh, a decision with my, with my future in mind. Yeah. And um, so pretty much for me, rugby league was over at that stage and um, okay. I'd moved moved on and it was, it was, it was always just going to be a, a part-time uh, affair for me after that. I, I didn't play in 2004. I had the year off pretty yep. much. Okay. Um, 2005 I played uh, – oh, sorry, 2003. I'll go through it. 2004 – Pretty much had the year off. Two thousand and five, I played local league. Okay. And um, and it was in two thousand and five where um, Kevin Campion, it was by that stage had cemented himself out at, at the Warriors, and we had become okay. very good friends. We had become very good friends from Cowboys, and I think I, I'd earned his respect for the way I sort of carried myself through. Uh, my final year of my contract at the Cowboys and what he'd seen in me training wise and how hard I fought for my spot. Yeah. And um and, and fought to get to sort of get back into the system. Okay. And um yeah, he we'd become quite good friends off the field and he came to my shop and checked it out and oh. I, remember, I remember him being over the counter and yes, oh it's just great. It's great. What are you what are you doing? You look fit. What are you playing? I said, Oh yeah. I said, yeah, Kev, I was, I'm, 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 I'm all dressed up with nowhere to go. I'm here and um, I'm just playing in Townsville. And he goes, oh, you still look like you can play. You want to, you want to come over to New Zealand? We need a hooker. And I went, oh, Kev, I went, don't muck me around. I haven't played for the better part of three seasons. 2003, I was pretty much fully injured. 2004, 2005, I was running around locally. So pretty much the better part of three seasons of, um, in the in the league wilderness. He goes, no, I'm serious. I'm serious. I said, no, don't fuck me around. <laughs> he goes, no, no, no. You, I'll send you a contract tomorrow. And sure enough, he sent me a, a contract through, um, which was was about $10,000 in match payments. It was a, oh an, incentive, an incentive contract. Oh, and, my God. And I, I, remember, I remember asking Dad, do you reckon I can – have a crack at this, and he goes, "Oh, one year, one year, one year." Yeah. So, I, I, they train, train pretty hard here in towns. Or what I thought, I really wanted to try and go over there quite fit. Yeah. And um, and there was quite a few in North Queensland based players over there at that stage. So yeah, it was I lucky over there. Lucky Grant Rebelli, yep. Nathan Fiend. So oh, the yeah. um. And, and even and even Brent Webb, you know, there are, these are all players that we sort of grew up within the Cowboy system, okay. and, we were, and we were great mates. Um, oh, so it made, awesome. the great to, it, it made the decision to go over a little bit easier, and it was it was just a, a, an itch that I, I needed to, like, the scratch for my own my own peace of mind. I guess I, yeah. in my mind, I sort of thought I, my future's set up here. I'm going to go over and, and and give this a crack and just get it, you know, get it out of my head to know that I could have done it or, you know, that yeah, I, I, could, I could do it or, or not. And because um, I'd, I'd sort of shown very briefly that I, I could play at that level to a high standard. Okay. And it, it left a bad taste in my mouth the way it finished. So going over there was – was a super challenge, but it was just a blessing as well. I, I just had the best rugby league experience, um, and uh, you know, gave me uh, a, a feeling of what what it, you know what it was like to, to play in the NRL and 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 
it was a special time for me because I, I earned the respect of some uh, some magnificent players, made some magnificent friends, um, yeah. and yeah, had the time of my life. Mate, that's unbelievable. Eh? Like, so with this contract. Basically, they've dangled the carrot. You know, it's very incentivized. So, like, were you having to work at the same time that you're playing well, full time footy? Well, when I went over, um, it only took me it only took me about a few weeks to realise that my, my ten thousand dollars was not going to go too far living in in living in Auckland. <laughs> nope. And I was and I was walking down Mission Bay, and um, I, I came up and I saw a. Um, the, the old fish pot cafe yeah. down in Mission Bay, and they had a help wanted sign. And I, and I, and I looked up, I went, This is a sign. <laughs> a sign. So I ended up um, for the entire off season, I ended up working in this fish, fish pot cafe really? and, and, and training during the day. And a little that I know at the time, but that that turned out to be a really good thing for me over over there for, on a number of levels. I think um, it, it 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 showed it showed that I wasn't a, some big Aussie big head that came over or someone having a crack. And I don't know. I think it lent me to the um, to the to the, the New Zealand um, fans and locals and. Psyche over there, they they they, they warmed to me, yeah, particularly particularly when I did get my opportunity and I played well. I think it, you know, it just it just um I, I earned the respect of a lot of people that I was prepared to um yeah work hard and have a crack and put it all out there. Yeah, that's the way. And so you came in and you actually got, you know, you made the side in two thousand and six, so you didn't muck around. Uh, the Warriors were coming into the season though minus four competition points. So, like, what's the feeling, you know, amongst the team and and yourself personally? Like, you know, when you're already you got you got the backs your backs to the wall, and you're going into a season. What does Ivan Cleary do as a coach to get you guys up, being behind the eight ball? Well, just looking looking back at it, you know, it was it was a huge thing, but I I don't think at any stage did we not feel as though we could still. I make something of the season, uh-huh. and you know, I, I, I think during that year we we got on a couple of really big runs a few times, and um, you know, I'm pretty sure I ended up playing close to twenty first grade games that year. Yeah. Um, and it, I don't think we missed missed the finals by too much. We'd we we I think without losing the points, we end up in the top four. Yeah, and you missed by like two points. Unbelievable. We missed by we missed by two points, and, and yeah. I think there was a feeling amongst and and the longer the, the season went on that we we, we, we could we, we could do something special, but it never eventuated. But it, it, it set us up for a, a big two thousand and seven, yeah. and um and again we we ended up making the top four in two thousand and seven. Man, just um, going back to 2006, though, you guys had a couple of unreal wins, particularly you played a screamer of a match against South. I remember you scored a try, you guys won like 40 to 6 or something, and then you guys played them again and thumped them 66 nil. And uh, I just couldn't believe what I was watching, mate. You guys were on fire. Hey, that, was, that, that side was just made up of some quality people and and, yeah. and exceptional footballers, you know, like it. Uh, it was one of the massive draw cards for me to 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 go over to New Zealand in the first place to to play behind a, a, a you know a front row of the likes of Ruben Wickey and Steve Price. You know, yeah. it's once in a generation will you ever play behind as a as as a hooker to get to play behind two class players like that. Let alone some of the other. Boards that were in that side: Logan Swano and Goodenbill, yeah. uh, Epalahami Lawaki, um, um, Warangi Kupu, yeah. La, um, Louis Anderson. The, the, the names go on and on. And then you know they also have players included in there, like Michael Luck, who's a very close friend and, and still yeah. is. You know, it was it, it was a special team to be involved with and, and play alongside. And yeah, um, yeah it was it definitely. A, a really uh, 
It was it was a close knit side. Everybody really gelled. We were a lot of very different characters. Yeah, um, probably my, my, you know, uh, probably what what Wade McKinnon probably being the most different out of all of those characters. Yeah, um, <laughs> do but, tell. Um, you know, but <laughs> oh no, just just a champion bloke. But we were just it was so the side was just made up of so many different characters but it just it just it just worked it just really worked and everybody yeah. gelled and um yeah we, it, the, the two years i was there it was just you know the friendships made and um uh the connections in rugby league you know you, you've got them for a lifetime and um it, it was it was it was a real special time yeah man so 2007 for me personally is one of my all-time favorite warrior seasons you guys were Unbelievable. I think you had one of the more underrated spines without being disrespectful because you had like yourself, Grant Ravelli, Michael Witt, who had all just like at the time, like it's not like we had a Jonathan Thurston in the side or anything like that. Stacey Jones had moved on and you're kind of relatively unknowns at that point. And then even Wade McKinnon came from Parramatta and he was kind of in and out of the Parramatta side. And then Brent Webb moved on and all of a sudden we had this unreal spine of just attacking players it actually really worked with the forward pack we had as well like you said so um i thought it was a stunning side just you guys tore some teams to shreds <laughs> I, I, yeah look and and mo most of those players the most of us there you spoke of guess very hungry you know hungry to play first grade yeah and um and uh, and throwing a little bit of belief given to you by 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 coach and um, Ivan Cleary and coaching staff, like um, you know, I think he got the best out of everybody there, uh, yeah. and he and, and he had a way of doing that, and and just you know by utilizing the other coaching staff that were there, and um, he you know he didn't didn't have to talk a lot, Ivan. He he sort of he, he knew how to get his message across, and yeah. if not through himself, through as I said through the other coaching staff, but. Um, he just struck a really good balance, and I think he got the best out of all of us there. Yeah, man. Um, was there any particular game that stood out for you during the regular season? Uh, that you know, because there was one for me that the thrashing of Penrith, you guys absolutely annihilated them. Wade McKinnon went crazy, the whole team did. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you smashed Newcastle as well, something like by 52 points. Unbelievable. We, we. We gave a few. We gave a few sides uh, a, a real big touch up. Um, yeah. That that season, and for me coming from the Cowboys, it was like it was get, getting a revenge on some of the early years at the Cowboys where we just got hammered, and <laughs> just just learned never to give a sucker a break because you know as as. I think most players that come through at some stage play in, in a sides that are, are struggle and to sort of get over there and experience some of the highs yeah. um, uh, of, of of being being a part of such a successful team and such a such a good team. It was it was just it was just like living a rugby league dream. I just loved it. Yeah, uh, definitely, to... definitely that Penrith game over in. Uh, we 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 played Penrith over there. We 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 were trailing, I think, fourteen nil, and I, I I had a pretty good game over there. I'd sort of set up a couple tries. Um, yeah. I, I I scored one and, and and set up another, and uh, I, I helped get us back into that match, and we ended up winning that side and uh, winning that match, and helped us to sort of cement our top four position. That's true. Um, yeah, that was that was that was a special one. Um, yeah, that was but, the last, last game of the season before going into the playoffs. I think that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Amazing. Also, you know, just ha having the being able to have the privilege to play at Mount Smart's um, Stadium when there's uh, capacity crowds, and you know, yeah. I remember, you know, they they, they we, we played a few matches there where you get on a roll and the crowd really just turns out for you. You know. It, it's a, it's a magical place to play, um, and I remember, I, I remember a, a very sad occasion where we we, we lost against Para, um, yeah. in the semis, um, yeah. and they, they called the blackout, and everybody came in black, and um, yeah. we got off to a it was just an unbelievable atmosphere. We got off to a flying start, 
and um, we we I think we were up twelve felt fourteen nil, and yeah. and um, we had all the running, and uh, we probably bombed a couple of tries, but one in particular where um, we 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 left a try. Um, short of the try line there. Um, yeah, big, big Logues had Marty yeah. outside of him, and he threw the dummy. He got he got he got tackled by an inch short of the try line. Yeah, that and, one stuck. <laughs> well, we we didn't see the ball for for the next 40, 40 minutes in that match, and I think we ended up losing by four by four points. But that would have put the that I think that would have put the the nail in the coffin of that Paris side, and that was a star. Uh, star started Parramatta side at that stage. They had all the big guns there, and you know, yeah. um, and and then we had to come up and play Cowboys in like thirty eight degree heat <laughs> at two o'clock in, in black jerseys. In, in, oh, in, that's in, rough. In, in, that's in, rough. <laughs> in, in the next semi, and they, and they, and they and they towed us up. Um, but yeah, uh, look, there was, and that was a big low. That was a big low point. You know, it was a. I just I felt like we could have really done something if we'd have gone par para. Yeah, yeah. For we sure. just were we we're on a, we we're on a big roll. Uh, we were playing well, um, and just just the timing to have to go up to play Cowboys at their home field in that semi semi final uh, in that in that weather it just unfortunately didn't suit suit our side. No. Uh, particularly when you, you've, you've just played all night games pretty much for the past, you know, 12, 12 games of the season playing in four degree temperatures. <laughs> it was just too much of a shock to the system. But who, who knows? We, we, we might have been able to go a couple steps further uh, in that 2007 season. I really think we had the sword to do it. But, yeah. you know, uh, it, was, it, was just, it was just a pleasure to be a part of it. Mate, as a fan, it was epic. And uh, when I was messaging you about doing this, you know, I mis- mentioned that um, I actually got to meet you guys after the Newcastle game at Mount Smart um, when, you know, you mix and mingle with the members and all of that. And, yeah, man, I, I shook everyone's hand and got my photo with everyone. It was just awesome. <laughs> like, how good, like, to be, you know, mixing and mingling with all you guys. And, wow, just what, what a season. It was it was a special season. I really enjoyed that one. Um, really, really good stuff. But uh, So what were the guys that you hung out with a lot? You know, um, I hear there's some pretty good stories out there uh, involving fire and locker rooms and uh, who are the sort of guys you hung uh, out with and some of the I stuff forgot, you got up to? I've forgotten all that. But we, we as, as a club, we all got on really well. But, um, yeah. the, you know, I've, there was a few of the young boys um, and a mixture of, you know, the Kiwi boys and and and, and um, the Aussie boys who really, really got, you know, re- really hit it off. Um, yeah. And we, we were, we'd just do, uh, after training, it was, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Are we going, are we going for a spa? Are we going for, a, you know, are we going for uh, something to eat? We're going for a movie? We're going, we, all, we do stuff together all the time. Awesome. Even after matches, you know, even after matches, particularly coming home, we just we'd end up gravitating to people. Some usually our house, and we, we'd have a bit of a party. We'd have great times. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah there, there's a few stories there um, that I've I guess become a little bit of folk folklore over um, New Zealand. I'm not sure if people are aware of them or not, but um, uh, one in particular with some fire where. The boys would constantly drown my towel in um in the water after before the end of training. So I'd, I'd freezing cold. I'd finish training and find all my clothes, my, my towel wet, and I'd finally I'd finally snapped and I'd, I'd go into a state of what was nicknamed as white rage, and I said, "That's it." <laughs> one, I said I would rounded it down to about four people. I said, "I know it's one of you four. So one of you better snitch the other one out because otherwise you're all guilty by association and you won't like the, there's going to be consequences and repercussions. <laughs> and they, they, they just thought it was funny. They just took the piss out of me. Anyways, I was living with Michael Luck at the time and at the end of training, I, I waited. I was fuming. I was just in the white, the, the mist had really set in and I said, Lucky, Stay here. He goes, what are you going to do? 
I said, just stay here. Yes. And I, I handed him a garbage bag. I said, hold this. He goes, what are you doing? I just said, hold this. And I started just emptying the locker of all those four that were involved. It was Lance to hire, um, <laughs> uh, Tony Martin, Wade Martin. McKinnon, uh, who else? Michael Witt. They, they're all involved. <laughs> So I said that. So I've got all their gear. I've just emptied their locker into a bag. And then we took, we went to the service station at Ellerslie. Yeah. And but we just lived up the road from Ellerslie, opposite the, the BP, opposite the uh, Ellerslie training grounds there. And we used right. to train there a lot. So I said, Lucky, film this. We're recording the whole thing. I gave him the phone and we labeled it Hate Crime Part One. And Hate Crime Part One was. Filling the bag with petrol, and I was just, I was at the service station. I just had the petrol bag, and I put about, oh, I must have put about five liters of fuel in this, oh this bag. <laughs> and the um the service station attendant, he was a Mad Warriors fan. He just had yeah. the dreadlocks. He was a uh, poly boy. He was just, he was just laughing his head off. He just said, "What are you doing?" I said, "Just, just keep watch for us because we're going over to the Ellerslie Fields." So then we've gone over to the Ellerslie Field once we filled the bag full of fuel and said, all right, Lucky, film this. This is hate crime part two. <laughs> so I've basically emptied all the um all the all the bag, the contents of the plastic bag, the big, big wheelie bin plastic bag onto the ground, mm -hmm. and all the drenched clothes in petrol. And I uh, said, hey, crime part two, this is what happens when <laughs> when you uh, want to muck around. I said, this is the consequences, and I've lit it up. Well, it was, <laughs> it was, it was raining at the time, and we'd gone under yeah. a tree where there was a little bit of, um, where there was a little bit of um, shelter from the rain. Right. But little to my knowledge is that all the undulations of this pet, uh, of, of that hill had sort of slope back towards the clubhouse, down the hill, all over the place. All this petrol had just spread everywhere. I've 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 lit it up. <laughs> there is fire just heading towards the Ellerslie Clubhouse down the, <laughs> coming down coming down the hill. Oh my God. <laughs> Before you know it, I, I'm I'm trying to stamp it out. Lucky you could hear on the video, Lucky go, get it out, get it out. I'm trying to stamp on it. And the more I'd stamp on it, the more it would spread the flames. <laughs> and um anyways, we've we've heard sirens and that's it. Me and Lucky said we've got to get out, we've got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Jumped in the car because it's that big long driveway to the Ellerslie Clubhouse. There's one way in, one way out, and we've got mm -hmm. out, and we've got back to the club, and we've gone. We've had to call old Don Man and say, "Look, mate, we've we've done something bad here, Don." <laughs> <That's something. laughs> we we've done something. We we it was like, yeah, it was it was kind of like a scene out of um, yeah, out of a movie. There was we've we've stuffed up. We've we've we've, we've and he's he's buried it for us, but yeah, that was a that that video got circulated quite a bit. I I, I wish I still had it because it'd be <laughs> hilarious to still have today. But um, I ended up I ended up getting um we ended up playing that weekend against Sharks and we lost. And okay. I, I remember I remember getting called into the the the, the and Cleary's room uh, yep. Monday morning, and he just. Basically tore shreds off me that, and that they that I'd upset the preparation for the team and and, and that they shouldn't have never got that far. And I, went, and I remember at the time well, I was in no right to really dispute anything, but I, I held my own. I went, hang on a second, what about my preparation? I said every day I'm 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 having pneumonia because they want to mess with me, but when I respond. <laughs> when I respond, it's my fault. I went, no, fuck that. I said, this would not have happened if they didn't touch my shit. If they don't touch my shit, that this this doesn't happen. <laughs> and, then, and I remember walking out, like, oh, that's my career <laughs> over. Oh, my think God. I'm I think I may have ended up playing a, a one game um, of penance down in preserves and um, finished out the <laughs> That's season. a great story. But, yeah, it was Shot. funny times. Oh.
top shelf story that one that's great so um i had Corey laurie he was one of my very first podcasts last year and he is an absolute legend I, he's the most funny dude but he, he he talked a bit about mad monday where waitangi corpu was going around with lighter fluid and setting everyone on fire and unbelievable stuff but um apparently you guys all went off to vegas and uh he said that the name Rita Wagner might ring a bell with you. <laughs> Look, we'd 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 gone over there and we had we'd we'd, we'd saved a lot of money and we'd you know we were basically drinking quite a few days quite heavily over there. And oh, at one point, I've sort of gone, you know what, guys, we probably should get get a show in or something while we're here. Like, you can't come to Vegas and not get a couple shows in. So I've yeah. got tasked with organising, uh, organising some you know events that we could do. Yeah, and I saw this like life size comedian of the year placard on one of these hotels, like one of the most expensive hotels in in Vegas, and it was like 20, 24 story life size comedian of the year. And I thought it must be hilarious. It must be hilarious. So I booked us all into that. And um, we, we've gone in, and as soon as we got in there, the boys started snippering. And the boys, like a few of the boys, the Aussie boys in particular, used to like one of me right up. Michael Witt, um, yeah. it was one Wade McKinnon, Skinny Burn. They used to love, love one me up. And they'd, and they'd, Panther was like their little puppet. <laughs> and, then, and old Corey Laurie, they sort of said to him, you know, he was, he was, they were just all firing shots. Huh? There's no one in here under 60 Gaddis. Where have you brought us? This is shit. Before it even started, they hadn't given this this comedian a chance. Anyways, I'm, I'm sitting there defending. I'm saying, it can't be too bad. It's 20 story, 22 story life size picture cut out of this woman on a on a hotel strip in Vegas. She's got to be all right. Anyways, they're just snipping at me. And I'm sweating. I'm I'm just sitting there thinking, gee, she's got to be all she, hopefully she's all right. And then she starts and she couldn't be more rubbish. And <laughs> the longer it went, we'd, we'd literally got two minutes into this show and all the boys stood up and walked out one by one. <laughs> one, by one. one by one, everybody <laughs> stood up and started walking out. And yeah, I think, I think she, and I got, I got the blame for that. And I think they nicknamed her <laughs> Read a rotten box in the end, and <laughs> and they was read a rotten, and they nicknamed oh. it read read a rotten box, and um, it, yeah, it was uh, and I got peppered, I got peppered for the next couple of days on that trip until I finally, until I finally um tried to redeem myself. So I said, look. I, so I booked us into Circus D S L A, and I thought can't go wrong with Circus D S L A in in Vegas. You, and it was a Beatles theme, and literally two minutes into the show, the stage malfunction and breaks down, <laughs> and they and they all started again. Oh, here we go again. Oh, you <laughs> Good way to go, Gaddis. You are single handedly trying to <laughs> oh and they just just drilled me into the ground until I've uh, ended up tearing on a on on absolutely giving myself an absolute plastering with the alcohol. Yep. We've we've gone it we've gone in the town that evening, and I've and I was single at the time, and I've 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 I'd met. Some girl I thought was quite nice at the time. I thought, nah, I'm just going to steer away from these boys. I'd had a gut full of them. Yeah. I'd had a gut full of them. I didn't. I didn't want to. I didn't want to talk to them or anything. For I'd, I'd put them in time out. I'd let them yeah. all know they're in time out. And anyways, they'd see me, and then they're all trying to George, get it, get it, get away, come come over here. And I'm going, just just leave me alone, mate. I'm, I'm with someone. Just <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> Anyways, they finally, they finally, I, they finally given up. And the next, the next day, I remember being down the, the pool area, and they were into me. Yeah. What about, 
I said, what what about what about that what about that girl you're you're dancing up with last night? I said, what? She's she was terrible. I said, no, she wasn't. She was fine. And I said, no, she was terrible. I said, no, she was a stunner. And I said, Gaddis. I said, yeah, you were trying to you were trying to ruin that for me. You've been into me for days. And just, just leave me alone. And I she, remember Rab looked me square in the eye. I said, Gaddis. And he lifted his phone up and he put it in front of me. He said, look at this. And I and I saw this picture. Of this guy. And I remember going, you delete this. You I said, Rab, if you value our friendship, you delete this phone. <laughs> it was gone. It, it, it was my shallow hell moment. Um where I, I, I saw this beautiful woman, but in, in the cold light of day when I saw that photo, I realised at that point it had, it had come rushing home to me that the boys were trying to save me. <laughs> they weren't trying to put shit on me. They were trying to save me. And oh, I've, I've, I've copped I've, I've cop, I've, I've cop shit about that incident ever since. Those, okay, those incidents yeah. ever since. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious, man. That's hilarious. So, uh, <laughs> so you got to the end of that season, though. Um, did you decide to leave the Warriors, or did they decide to go in another direction with Ian Henderson? What happened there? Well, I, I'd um, I'd made it very clear that you know I, I was I, I was a year to year proposition. Okay. I'd made it very, very, you know, I was very much playing on the goodwill of my father at that stage. The business was set up for me and. Um and I'd sort of stretched the friendship to play the second season. Okay. And I, I would have I would have loved to play another year, but I, I I couldn't have committed beyond another year. And I remember sort of having that conversation with um Ivan earlier in the year and I, I guess it, it um it probably sealed my fate, you know, rugby leagues are um is a professional sport. They need to secure their salary cap. And uh, towards the end of the year, I've just said, look, we've made a decision to to go a different direction. And, um, you know, they kind of, it kind of made sense that they, they needed to secure their, their, um, their roster for the next coming seasons. Yes. Um, but yeah, and we, we should have, um, which was difficult at the time, um, and and I, and I and I wish I could have I wish I could have stayed on a few years longer um, yeah. at the Warriors because you know it was just it was just such a great club to be involved with. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. It was great having you there. I was real shocked when they announced you were leaving. I was like, oh, what? He's been playing great, you know, and the comeback kid. I would have, I would have, uh, in in hindsight, you know, I wish I could have done so much different. Um, you know, I wish I'd just seen my my and let my NRL career play out, and probably not worry so much about um, the the family stuff back home. But you know, I I I guess I'm not wired that way. I, I I've always I tried to sort of prioritize um, um, my my family responsibilities um, while yeah. I played. And okay. um, which which probably cut my career short. Um, over in uh, England, I did I get I did get an extra year to go over to England. Yeah. Um, so what happened there? Yeah, I, I um, I got I got signed at Huddersfield, and you know it was uh, a, a very very much again. I got signed for two years, um, okay. but I was I was looking at it from um. Uh, a year on sort of basis and pretty much six, oh, not even six months, about four, four to six months into my playing stint there. We had some family dramas at home, which um, was putting a lot of pressure on, on my father. Um, yeah. And, you know, look, um, and, and, and I had to make the decision to come home. I, um, it's probably not too much of a secret now. My sister's done amazing, but she, she had a little, um, um, she had a little problem uh, with drugs at, at one stage, and uh, it, yep. it, it was um, she had a little boy as well. It was a decision I had to sort of, um, I had to, I guess, put prioritize my family, um, and sort of. I remember going in on the, I remember getting a phone call 
from my an uncle sort of said, look, I'm not telling you what to do, son, but if you if your dad lasts for another th three months, I'll be surprised. Okay. Oh wow, that's a tough so, time, man. Yeah, so like he's just stressed out. So you know, I ended up I got to have that conversation on Saturday. I I'd spoke I'd, I'd booked a flight that same same day, and I, I sort of left England on the Tuesday. So um, and, and came home, and um, I guess took my 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 tenure up at the at the at the family business. To, um, um, to, to to relieve a lot of the sh the pressure that was on, on my dad at the time. Yep. And um, it probably big part of me, big part of me, you know, with the thing of life, the benefit of hindsight. I I, I wish I just concentrated on my, my my own sort of path. Okay. Um, but with, with the way things were later worked out, eventually. Eventually, I ended up. You know, it was it was just too difficult to work with um, in the family business, and I had to sort of step away. Okay. Yeah. So, but you know, it, it's it's really hard. Uh, I guess I've learned to look back and micro second guess your choices and things you that you've made along the way because everything everything happens for a reason you know and yeah man i, I uh, i've i've got a beautiful son now that you know and I'm not with uh his his mum but um I, I i wouldn't replace him for any for anything um the just the thought of not having him in my life in some capacity now would be uh, unfathomable. So if yeah. I, if I had have gone a different direction somewhere along the line, I, he he wouldn't be in the picture. So you know everything I guess happens for a reason. Yeah, man. What I learned from that experience, you know, there's just how blessed the time that was over there. You know, we just the the quality friends that you know I made over there. Um, I'd like to think you know lifetime friends are just and. It's probably been probably been a, a hard period of life since footy finished um, for a number yep. of reasons, and probably probably fell out of contact with a lot of the boys over there. But okay. um, but you know the, I, the the wonderful nature of rugby league. You know, sometimes you, you don't see each other, and, and friendships you don't see each other for a long time, and it, when you do see each other, you uh, you pick right up where you left off. But yeah. Yeah, big shout out to. Uh, a lot of the boys over there that I haven't spoken to in in, in a while, just um, you know, we've got to sort of see a lot of those guys on your show, and cool. They, they might see this as well, so just uh, send a shout out and just say hello to everybody. That's awesome, man. That's so cool. There was a bit of a full circle moment that happened, though. You actually somehow ended up playing for the Cowboys one last time. Um, how did that all come full circle for you? Oh, look. I was in good nick when I came home, and um, the the Cowboys, I guess for sure, and I, um, they, I, I just made it known to them I was home, and you know, like I, I'd, I'd be happy to, um, be involved in the club if there was a position, and they, they, they opened their their arms and let me, um, welcome me back into the club, and it was, um, I think Neil Henry was the coach at the time. Um, yep. for, for that season, and just um, I was essentially I was working, um, training in the morning early, going to work during the day, going back and training in the evening, playing in the Queensland oh, yeah. Cup. Uh, it, it was too much. It was too yep. much. I ended up getting getting a uh, a game in there um, towards the back end of the season. Okay. Um. But uh, it. it by the end of the season, it was just um, it was just too much, and I just had to I had to call it quits. I, I just couldn't I couldn't juggle all those balls in the air. It was just killing me. Yeah, man. So, what's uh the frame of mind when you've made that decision? Right, I'm done. Like, what does a player go through? What did you personally go through when you like really have cut that cord? Like, when you're like, right now, it's time to move on. How do you, um, how do you cope with that? Look, I had a d different focus. At that time, you know, I was really focused on my, um, on making my, my my business a success. 
Yes. So I guess it it, it, it softened the, the the blow of that. Yes. And you know, I, I think I think that sort of final year at the Cowboys sort of just um or not left a bad taste in my mouth, but it just it just um yeah, just high it, it wasn't the it wasn't the same experience that I got to have. Um, over at over at the Warriors, where you know I was rewarded for effort, yeah. and that's that's what I that's what I really loved about um my experience with the with the Warriors. You know, they 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 you, you play you trained hard, um, and and if you you back that up on the field, they they reward you for that effort. And um, I, I didn't feel like I got that opportunity at the Cowboys. I mean, look, unfortunately, I just despite being a local junior here, I probably never. Quite got a great run at um, uh, NRL um, with the club. Um, yeah. Still love the club. St- st- still love every minute I got to play there. But it, it wasn't just that um, great rugby league experience that I got to feel um, playing for New Zealand. Yeah. Well, on the upside, I guess at least you can look back on your career and go, you know what, I actually did get there. I got to play NRL finals in a freaking good team too. And like you guys, like you said, you could have you could have pushed a little further if you're not going to have a Parramatta. I think you guys were on track. Well, we, 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 I, I'm pretty sure Storm ended up there or thereabouts that year and we, we, we'd we beaten Storm twice. Yeah. And, and over the, 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 those two seasons, we one of the games we beat them was, was over at... Um, uh, it was over at Olympic Park where they hadn't been beaten for, for two or three seasons. Yeah, yeah. And are. um, and and that 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 particular game, I don't know if you remember the old. I don't know if you remember the old rugby league week player rankings. Oh, I certainly do. I'm a I was a rugby league week fanatic. Like, I'm a geek, so like, of course I had it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that that was the that was a game where, where I, I got given. Uh, I got to, I got to, I made the team of the week. Oh, good! And then we'd played, we played Melbourne Storm, and we'd beaten them. And it was just that for me, that was like it was just a, a, a special little thing, you know, to get one up over someone who's gonna potentially be an immortal one day. Oh, no. um, you you can sort of look back on those little um look those little memories and be you know um chuffed by them, I guess. Oh, you should be, man. You should be. Uh, was there any particular player, firstly, you loved playing alongside, and is there any one player you loved coming up against? Um. Oh, look. Uh, the camaraderie we had in that Warriors side um, was, was special, and, and you enjoyed playing with a lot of different people for different reasons. I, I, I think there's very few and far people who would say that they, they don't love playing with Ruben Wiki. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he, he made he made he made that um he, he made that side a, a very special side to play for. And you know, you could go through one to one to seventeen and 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 and, and sort of say you, you really enjoyed you you're playing with them for different reasons. I I I really enjoyed playing with Lucky. He was a, he was a roommate. We were very close. We become very close in New Zealand, um, but definitely put Ruben right. Put Ruben right at the top of the list. Fair enough too. He's an amazing, amazing player. Unbelievable, unbelievable player. Was there anyone you loved coming up against? Like you said, Cameron Smith. You know, was there anyone that really challenged you, but you stood up to the challenge? Yeah, look, coming up against those players, like you just, you just like to sort of know. I guess we. Test yourself, engage yourself against them, and for whatever reason, um, I played generally good games. I, I, I played good games against them, but in particular against Tigers. And every time oh, yeah. we seemed to play against old Robbie Farrow over, um, you know, it seemed to have really big games as well. So, um, yeah. what? Well, in fact, my first game for the for the Warriors was over, um, over in was it. Was against Tigers in was it Wellington or Christchurch? Oh, that was in Wellington. Wellington, pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. and you guys yeah. won, didn't you? Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, so <laughs> oh, good. So, 
Uh, but uh, even, even from from Cowboys days, just for whatever reason, every time we played the Tigers, it just seemed to have big games. So I definitely enjoyed the competition of playing against uh, those, uh, testing yourself against those bigger name players. And right, um, yeah, it was very lucky. Lucky enough, I got the chance to do so. Oh, man. So let's finish with a few of my fun questions. Who do you support in the NRL? Well, definitely, definitely Warriors and and yep. Cowboys as well. Cowboys, um, my, my little boy's here, so I try and take him to every home game. And you know, he's just getting to a fun age where he's starting to cheer and shout, and you know, start the chants and claps around the oval. So yeah, definitely those two sides. That's awesome, man. So who do you think is going to win the NRL in twenty twenty four? I think some big questions were answered on the weekend. I mean. <laughs> Uh, I think Broncos and Panthers have cemented themselves as front runners. You know, even even the, the Broncos are injury r- riddled at the moment. They have um, they've got some class in their back row, some depth there, and yep. you you're gonna take a very good side to beat. I think Panthers or, or Bronx this year. Yeah, man, it's so hard to go past them for a rematch. It could happen. Good well, Roosters disappointed me on the weekend. I thought I thought they had a little bit more go, and and I think Panthers sort of showed that they're they you know they they they've got a, quite a way to go to be able to match them. So yeah, um, they they were the right. other side I I thought were were coming along sneakily. Um, Manly as well. I thought oh, they might, they might, they might look like they might have turned a corner, but then they they dipped to Dragons, who have been terrible for the fir- for the first two three okay. rounds of the competition. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I, I think those they, those two teams uh, are, are right up there. But um, Warriors, uh, they get their attack right. Um, the defense looks great. Um, I think they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna be very difficult to beat this year too. I certainly see top four finish for them. Look at then George Gaddis says Warriors the top four. Loving it. All right, man. What's your favorite TV show of all time? Oh yeah, I think Seinfeld right up there. The old Seinfeld's hard to beat growing yeah, up. Um, yeah, they, they, they'll, they'll do me that one. Lovely, lovely. And last question, man. If you were on death row, quite appropriate with your new job, <laughs> what would your final meal be? <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, probably, probably a little bit of a some a bit of calamari and chips, a nice Greek salad. I'm I'm, I'm easily pleased. <laughs> <laughs> a nice Greek salad for our Greek warrior. Loving it, man. Loving it. Oh well, thanks, man, for coming on the show. It's been so cool to meet I, you and hear the stories, man. Uh, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Hope I haven't waffled too much and I uh, feel a little bit out of place on here with some of the legends you've you've been interviewing of late. You've you've certainly um you know you've you certainly put a a lot of past great past players um uh, through over your program. So it's a pleasure to be part of that. Oh, mate, the pleasure is all mine. Trust me, you're a legend, man. Anyone who laced up the boots is a legend in my eyes, and I know all the Warriors fans loved you, man. Like you're one of the greats. So thank you again for well, uh, coming on and sharing your career with us and all the good stories, mate. And um, well, I really, and th- I really, I really appreciate it. And you know, I guess my my, my Warriors is a you know, fun part of my life because you know I, I felt I felt like I was definitely. Um, <clears throat> you know, respected for the contribution I made and, you know, they, they saw value in what I did. So it was it was great time, great time for me. 100% man. All right, man. So uh, thank you everyone for watching. This has been the incredible Greek warrior, George Gaddis. Uh, make sure you get on the Facebook group, Point of Difference Rugby League. We're all hanging out on there. There's heaps of legends on there and get on the YouTube, subscribe and follow it and all of that rubbish. And we'll see you guys next time for kickoff. Full time. 